Welcome to the Daily Coin. My name is Rory and today is Sunday, September the 3rd, 2017. And I certainly appreciate you being here. And I wanted to make a quick correction on the last video that I made. And it's right there. You can see uh, embracing cryptos, bashing gold, reload. And in that video, I stated that there were three Bitcoin wallets that controlled 99% of all the Bitcoins uh, in circulation. That was wrong. I was speaking from a point of memory instead of uh, having the information in front of me like I do now. There are three Bitcoin wallets that that have a huge amount of Bitcoins, but it's actually the top 1% of all Bitcoin wallets that have a that have more bitcoins than the other 99% combined and Ken Shortgen over at the Daily Economist put this out put this article together about a month ago and he's got the formula broken down right here you can see it right there highly recommend you following uh, Ken's work he does he does really great work and he is at the Daily Economist and Let's get on with the report happening with the cryptocurrencies versus uh, government versus our individual freedoms. And want to start out with something that I wrote. Uh, it looks like originally published this back about a year ago, August the 6th, 2016, exposing the group of 30 to Rose Gallery. These are former and current central bank members. These are members of academia. You can see Paul Volcker, uh, Jean-Claude Trichet, Ben Bernanke. I mean, these are just some of the criminals and it goes on down and it gives all of them that were current as of this writing the change. There's Tim Geithner, uh, Paul Krugman. These are just some of the people that you're gonna recognize. Larry Summers. And I mean, this is, like I said, rogues gallery. So just want to kind of set the tone here for a minute. Next up, another article that I wrote. Uh, well, I republished it in April of this year. It's called Tower of Greed. This is pointing out the people that actually, they have these secret meetings that Zero Hedge wrote about, and we don't get the mem we don't get the minutes from this. It's the world's most exclusive club, and it has eighteen members. The details of the meeting are kept from the public. The ECC makes recommendations on the memberships and organization of the three BIS. Uh, committees that deal with the global financial system, payment systems, and international markets. Ben Bernanke, who couldn't see the housing bubble in 2006, but yet these guys could make decisions about how Greece should join the uh, European Union. This was written in 2000. And, uh, it was written in 2000. So. They knew in May of 2000 or 1998 that Greece could not participate in the Eurozone because not because of anything that involves the Greek people, but because their uh, debt to GDP was out of balance. They couldn't get it in balance because of the way that their economy works. It worked just fine under the drachma, but the group of 30, this along with this 18-member secretive gang, decided that they knew better than the Greek people and what was already happening. We move along. Now we get into all the plenary's men. This is a video that John Titus uh, produced, published, and it goes through the laws that are dictated by the BIS that circumvent sovereign law of most Western nations, if not all nations around the world. 
It is unbelievable. If you haven't, this is not speculation on uh, John Titus's part. He's actually taking their documents, their words, their actions, and lining them all up and detailing how it actually works. Digital enslavement. This is where I get into the cryptocurrencies and what I see happening based on some of the information that I've just presented to you. This is a three-part series. This was a very serious, in-depth look at a wide variety of scenarios that directly impact you and me and everyone else and how all of this is coming together. People have been questioning, I've been questioning whether or not cryptocurrencies were going to be allowed to run free. And my argument is, it has been, that the big, the too big to jail, that Eric Holder's Department of Justice said, in fact, the too big to jail banks are too big to jail and gave them free gave them a get out of jail free card, all of them. So they now face no prosecution for anything. All the markets are rigged. If you, if you believe that the markets are free globally, then explain to me the Forex, the Forex scandal. Okay. HSBC faces, faces fresh suit alleging forex manipulation fx scandal euro money forex manipulation global banks admit guilt in forex probe find nearly six billion dollars the timeline for the global fx rigging scandal if you deal in fiat currency anywhere on the planet this would have a direct impact on your life period HSBC settlement proves the drug the drug war is a joke. This is an article outlining how HSBC was laundering drug money for these terrorist organizations that bring the heroin to the world. Barclays Bank reaches a hundred million dollars U.S. settlement over LIBOR rigging scandal. Once again, the LIBOR, the London Interbank uh, Overnight Rate, has an impact on interest rates that the banks charge for charge one another, which in turn is what they wind up charging us. If you have a loan of any kind in fiat currency on this planet, this has a direct impact on you. All of these are still ongoing. They paid their, they paid their um, cost of doing business. We'll call it a fine, but their cost of doing business, in this case for Barclays, it was $100 million. They were one of, I believe, six of these uh, too big to jail banks that were fined, that were found guilty. They weren't called, it wasn't called guilty, but they were found guilty. Otherwise, there wouldn't have been a fine levied against them or cost of doing business. So the, all of these things are pointing in a very particular direction. I was challenged by a commenter on my last video who said that I needed to speak with Andreas Anopoulos. Well, that picture right there, that's Mr. Andreas Anopoulos. And as you can see from the title of this, of this video, Bitcoin Q&A, will governments ban cryptocurrencies? It's seven and a half minutes. And the person asks, can, it's close to this, it's, it's about halfway through where the guy says, ask the questions that I'm asking. What about the IMF? What about the BIS? What about these two big to jail banks that are going to come in and crush their words? The IMF used the words, and I showed it in the last video, that the IMF plans on, quote, crushing the cryptocurrencies, period. 
And Mr. Andreas has asked this question that I've been asking. And he answers it with the question that I'm going to ask you. What happens in the future when Bitcoin becomes mainstream and governments realize there's some intra-governmental organization like the UN or the IMF or the US or the EU decides to implement their own cryptocurrencies? Mm -hmm. Yeah, say US coin or um, IMF coin, and they make it. Um, they, they they sort of make it. Uh, so they make it a rule, so everyone has to use that coin, and they make it illegal to use any others. Mm -hmm. They set up their own nodes and put a lot of budget in that. Could they sort of drive all other cryptocurrencies in that way? No, they're going to turn a lot of people into criminals. Yeah. Uh, because a lot of people will then ignore that rule and break that rule. Then you have to worry. Like, if your government is setting up a system, they're not willing to use that system to compete on an equal basis on its merits, but instead have to pass a law that forces you to use that system and makes it illegal to use the competing system of open market economics. What the hell kind of government did you just elect? <laughs> like, at that point, you're beginning to wonder, what kind of government is this? Let's go through the words. Democracy, mm, no. uh, public democracy, no. constitutional democracy, police state, <laughs> fascism, totalitarianism. That's the kind of, okay, yeah, that's, that's, that sounds like totalitarianism. I never signed up for that. Great. So, you know, if your government starts doing crazy things, the question is, can governments do crazy things that violate the rights of billions of people? Sure they can. They do it every day. <laughs> and, and we have to resist and make choices. Make choices not only about which governments we elect, uh, but also, at some time, make choices about using other systems. And people in Venezuela are making that choice today by breaking the law because the choice is between feeding their family and not feeding their family. At that point, whether you've broken the law is a small issue. Right? So again, I don't expect to see that. And the reason I don't expect to see that is because most governments in the world, when they see the idea of people being able to use a free electronic commerce system that is efficient, that creates growth and opportunities and jobs and innovation, that gives them access to the world of commerce across borders, what's well, not to like? I mean, that's something you should encourage. And if your government does not encourage that, and does not believe in those ideals, that people should be free to associate, and free to express, and free to make choices, then your government is not free. Um, which is a much bigger problem than Bitcoin. At that point, you know, I would be less worried about their power over cryptocurrencies than by the fact that they have all the guns. What type of government do you think, do you believe, do you know that we live under? Whether you, if you are in a quote, Western developed nation, end quote, what type of government? Do you believe, do you think, do you know that you live under? Not the one that is touted, not the one that's presented to us, but the actual government that we live with, the one that allows Forex market rigging, the one that allows for uh, LIBOR market rigging, one that allows, that is policy, to rig the bond market, we'll call it quantitative easing. What type of government do you believe, do you think, do you know that we live under? This is the question that a, a participant in this audience asked, and Mr. Andreas answers it with a list of types of governments. And now we get down to the nitty-gritty of what I see as happening. So it's up to you. I, I, as I've stated before and will continue to state, what you do with your money is your business. I don't care. It is of no concern to me at all. Watch this video. Listen to what he says. And this is a, this Bitcoin for beginners, whether you are a 
actually a beginner or whether you are an avid Bitcoin fan. This is a great video. It really is. It's really well done. Uh, it's Andreas Sinopoulos. He explains it in very simple terms that anyone can understand. He uses examples that are that that paint a really great picture of how everything works. And as I've stated numerous times in all of the articles that I've written, it doesn't matter. None of that matters. And the reason that it doesn't matter is because of criminals like these guys, Tower of Greed. That's the, that, that image is the Bank for International Settlements building. It's like, here's another great example and what actually sparked this, which was an article that was published, I believe, by, uh, in Financial Times yesterday, discussing new banks getting on board with the util utility settlement coin, which I've written extensively about. Uh, it's well over a year old, or it's, or it's about a year old is when it first came on, which is when I first reported on it. And the utility settlement coin is a, it was designed specifically for the central banks. And the USC, the utility settlement coin, trades at parity to the Federal Reserve note, the euro, the franc, and the pound. The announcement yesterday, I believe one of the banks in Japan, not the People's Bank of Japan, their central bank, but one of the uh, two big jail banks, is now on board. State Street Bank is now on board. When, when I hear State Street Bank, this is what I default to. How your wealth is stolen every day. This is an interview with Harry Markopoulos that he explains how State Street and Bank New York Mellon steal from our 401ks, our IRAs, our pension funds every single day. He spells it out. Is he right or is he wrong? Well, according to the state of California, he is 100% right because he, the information that he presented to the state of California Attorney General brought them to court and State Street lost. There are currently, or and have been, this was recorded in 2011, and there, at that time, there were, I think, four, three or four different states, including the state of New York, the state of Florida, I believe this, uh, either West Virginia or Virginia, that had filed a uh, suit against State Street and Bank New York Mellon. They refuse to go to court. They keep putting it off because they know that once they step into court, and, and Harry Markopoulos says this, these are not my words, that once they step into court, they really don't stand a chance because there it is. Uh, it, it's, it's very clear to see. All of these things point in a particular direction. I'm going to ask you again, what type of government do you believe, do you think, do you know that we have in our world? I have my thoughts. I, I, I study this. I've been doing research and analysis on, on these criminals for a number of years, close to a decade. So I have some knowledge as to what's actually happening. I've just presented some knowledge to you as far as what is actually happening in our world right now, today that involves these governments. Presented in the last video of this type, asking the same questions. But now we've got now, since I was challenged, and, and this uh, Andreas Annopoulos came up, I went and watched this video, which is really good, and I watched this video, both of them. I now feel really comfortable 
with, with the stance that I have because of the answers that this, what, what the person said on my channel in relation to this video. Let's see. Let me get it up here for you. And got that. He, he believes this, the person that made this comment believes that Andreas Anopoulos is one of the smarter people within the Bitcoin community. He's very articulate. He is very well studied. And the, the case that he presents is beautiful. I mean, I'm not going to deny that. Here it is right here. Says Rory, if you're serious about getting answers to your questions, then invite Andreas Anopoulos to your show. Then I'm sure we can close down most of your nonsense fear mongering. Okay, people fear what they don't understand. Have you heard the saying, "If you can't beat them, join them"? I'm sure you have. Well, this is why the banks bankers are joining the crypto party. Otherwise, they will be left in the dust within a very few years. Now they may have bought some extra time by scaring people to stay in fiat or to buy their own crypto uh, once they have something ready. But the crypto is the free market. We no longer have to use whatever they make. The future is here no matter, no matter if you like it or not. Learn more. Invite Andreas. I dare you. The only question that I would ever ask uh, Mr. Andreas is the questions that I've already presented. The questions that he that, that he directly answers in this video, because there's a member of the audience that asked the very question that I would ask him, and the only question that matters: What type of government do you believe that we have? What type of government do you know that we have? That's it. That's what it comes down to. Period. And if you think that we have a uh, constitutional republic. You might want to do some more research. If you think we have a democratic republic, you might want to do some more research. If you think that we have a police state, I would tend to lean in that direction. If you think we have a government, a fascist government, now we're getting closer to what I believe. If you believe that we have a totalitarian government, I don't think we're quite there yet. I think we're leaning in that direction. But a fascist, Leaning totalitarian government? Yes, that's what I believe. What do you believe? What does your research show? What does your, what do you, your daily life experiences show? What do the too big to jail banks prove to us every single day in a court of law? I'm sorry, supposed law. There are no laws. There is no rule of law. Period. So, I hope that that I hope that that answers some of your questions. And like I said, when I watched this video, it reaffirmed everything, everything that the almost decade of research has proven and proves that, or to me anyway, you can do, you can believe whatever you wish. It doesn't matter to me. If you like, if you like cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin, Monero, Dash, you know, the F, the F-E-C-K coin. I don't care. I don't care. The Burger King coin. Go, go for it. Load up. Get all you want. But just know that the IMF has already announced that they plan on crushing cryptocurrencies. And they have the ways and means of doing that. Well, they can't, they can't cut it, shut it down because it's decentralized. Well, okay. So what? What does that mean? It means that if you use an outlawed currency and all of a sudden your taxes that you report at the end of the year don't equal what you spent or what you acquired by the end of the year, there could be a problem with that. I'm not saying that there will be. I'm saying that there might be. 
if you if if your household generates you know seventy five thousand a hundred thousand dollars a year and you've been filing your taxes based on that and all of your expenses and all of your outflow lines up to that to say yeah this supports it and all of a sudden there's an additional four thousand dollars worth of stuff that's come online or ten thousand dollars worth of stuff that's come online what about facial recognition what about biometric fingerprint what about all of the spy technology that's all tied together that's tied back to each one of us I want something as desperately as anybody else. I want out of this system. Do I see cryptocurrencies being that way out? I don't. I don't. I do not. So, but that's all I got for today. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know what kind of uh, government you think that, that we have, that, that, you, that you believe that we are living in or living under in the uh, comment section. I would really appreciate that because... That's what it comes down to, folks, and it's just that simple. So have a great weekend, have a great afternoon, and we will talk soon. Thank you so much.